what would you do if it was you? In her small, dark apartment, surrounded by the mess of a life on hold, Maya sat overwhelmed behind her computer. Each click through endless job listings felt heavier, echoing with the ticking clock on the wall. Every response was the same. We regret to inform you. Her eyes were heavy from exhaustion and tears. She couldn't take another rejection. Her phone vibrated. Maybe feedback from a recruiter. Number overdue rent, unpaid bills. Each notification was another weight on her chest. A baby's wail suddenly pierced through her thin walls. The noise mixed with her exhaustion and she pressed her palms to her temples to block it all out. For a moment, everything was silent except for her pounding heartbeat resonating in her head. A small spark of hope came when a job interview appeared on her calendar. She dressed carefully. She was ready but stressed, her hands trembling as she smoothed her hair. She couldn't mess this up. She needed this job. So tell us why you're the best fit for this role, the interviewer's voice asked, overly cheerful. She took a breath, ready to answer, but the baby's cries came back, louder and more insistent. Maya lost control. The interviewer's smile tightened with obvious irritation. She knew before the call ended that this would be another failure. After the call, Maya stood in front of her pile of red-stamped envelopes, unopened. She started to pace her apartment, pulling at her hair as whispers echoed in her mind. You're about to be homeless. You are so lame. Anxiety tightened around her chest, making it hard to breathe. Suddenly, a burst of anger took over. She slammed her laptop shut, then grabbed the mirror on her dresser and threw it down. She ended up cutting herself on the cheek. Maya lay on the floor, hopeless, staring at the pieces reflecting her broken image. A sharp buzz from her phone cut through the silence. Was it another rejection? She read the text message. Hey, I heard you're still looking for work. Quick cash, like last time. I'm in town with a client for a couple of days. Interested? Message back for details. She read it again and again. She knew exactly what he wanted, but she had sworn to herself she would not go back to that industry. Quick cash. The words beat in her mind, tempting but risky. She barely made it out alive last time. Bills and the landlord's threats crowded her thoughts. Without thinking, she typed, What's the address? What would you do if it was you? What would you do? This is a challenge that I'm asking you. In this situation, what would you do? This could be your story. Maya's story could be your sister's story. An aunt's story. Somebody you know is going through that same challenge. But what would you do? Maya's story is sad and heartbreaking. Maybe you know somebody that went through the same thing. And it's hesitating between getting to those crazy offers and finding a decent job. And it's not that they don't want to actually find a job or they can, they're not doing everything in their power to. Sometimes it's just easy to go to a route where you know for sure you're going to get that cash. I've gotten multiple videos of women struggling financially in this economy, struggling to find a job that can be paying them decently for them to survive over their bills, over their life, over everything they need. Between the rejections, the extensive hiring process, or the ghosting, those women are losing their mind over the current job market. Let's watch together their stories and discuss about it. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nina Moyo. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and then let's discuss. I was debating whether or not I wanted to make this video, but you know what? I'm at my wit's end and I feel like I'm not the only one going through this, so I just want to talk about it. I got yet another rejection email during my job search, and I was really hoping that I was going to get this job because it was in my field, and I had two interviews, and I was really hoping that this was going to be the one because it was exactly what I've been asking for in my field, Monday through Friday, a perfect like 8 30 to 5 weekends off and that's just what i've been searching for for so long and it was hybrid 
was so disappointed when I got the rejection email. I emailed them to see if there was an update, even though I knew they said that they would get back to me. But sometimes recruiters or HR people say they'll get back to you and then they never do. So I felt like it didn't hurt to send an email. And then today when I got the rejection email, they were like, as we stated in the interview, we said we would reach out to you, but we picked another candidate, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but sometimes recruiters say that they'll get back to you and you never hear anything from them. And I'm honestly so, so tired of recruiters saying that they'll get back to you within a certain amount of time and they don't get back to you at all. And it's even worse when you send emails wondering about an update and they ignore your emails and don't respond at all that is the worst thing ever respond to candidates so they're not waiting and waiting if it's a no then just let us know that's all we're asking why are you not responding that like is one of the worst things that you can do this interview i even prepped for multiple days i did my homework i did my research my friend did a mock interview and when i actually went for the in-person interview i was so excited because some of the questions that she asked me during the mock interview were the same questions they asked me in the real interview i'm honestly just flabbergasted because I don't know anymore like what these companies are looking for. I feel like experience is not enough. They want someone maybe with all the bells and whistles or maybe they are hiring people that they know of or that someone recommended. And I do know that sometimes they do post job openings even though they're gonna hire internally. I'm just devastated because it is so hard. I signed a lease for my apartment and I don't even have money to get groceries. I don't even want to spend money to buy any groceries and I've never, and I don't want to cry, but I've never ever have been in like this horrible situation and like I keep trusting and praying that like god's gonna get me through but today it was just like like what is happening i do get interviews and i do get people like recommending me and saying me that their like manager is gonna look at my application and then still i get rejections i put my friends as references or referrals and I feel like I keep getting opportunities or interviews or phone calls and I get excited about it just for me to get a rejection. I thought I was done crying, but I just feel like, why is the door opening so lightly for some things and then it's just shutting? I just want a door to open for me, for my job. It's so disheartening to me because I went to school and I got a degree and I'm still paying off loans for that degree and I can't even get hired for a job that I went to school for in my field. I don't know what to do anymore. This is the situation I'm in right now and I'm like hoping that I get through it. And I know that there's other people going through the same thing right now. And how exhausting it is to apply for jobs just to get a rejection over and over and over. I know there's other people out there that feel the same way I do or are going through the same thing that I am. I feel like I've lost so much and I'm just wondering when I, am I going to get it back? I feel like rejections in this job market search is not stuck about enough it's really difficult to wake up every single morning and just say i'm not enough and seeing that you are being told you're not enough every single day and every single day you have to go over those rejections and still search for another opportunity and i saw the video of this girl i was like 
oh my god this is so heartbreaking because she's been doing that now for over six months six months she has a degree in the field that she wanted to she worked so hard to do and did everything the society told her to do and she's not able to land that job she can't and you can see that she do everything she can in her power to get it but it's not happening on the top of that she has to work with all the rejections she's getting every single day the way i accumulated so much debt during unemployment that i did not have previously i started my unemployment period in like july of 2022 and it was like pretty steady until december of 2023 I had a couple jobs here and there. I was doing gig work, but like nothing really stuck. And I never had enough to pay my fixed expenses that whole time. I lived off of savings. I drained my Roth IRA. I drained my 401k. I took out a personal loan. I put probably $15,000 on credit cards because I didn't have enough fucking money to live. And I'm not someone who's buying shit. Like just my fixed expenses, I was not able to, to provide for. Like sometimes I'll treat myself to a $2 icy once a week. Like that's the level of frugal I've been. Maybe the occasional bubble tea. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. But it's not enough to accumulate like $25,000 of extra debt I didn't have. No one really talks about the debt cycle of unemployment or of getting laid off. Where once your savings are done, you're fucked. Like you just have to accumulate debt or you literally will get evicted. I'm so sorry that's your position, friend. The luck in America is that you can accumulate debt in order to survive. This woman accumulated $25,000 of debt over the last few months of being unemployed, which is insane. It's such a high number. And the amount of interest she's probably have to pay on that is probably crazy as well. I feel like there's a part also that is not talked enough about because once you are in this situation, your expenses are keep are running still like you still have to pay for water electricity rent food and obviously she still want to enjoy herself she said that she have the occasional boba i understand that you want to spend a little six dollar here and there you can't go cold like cold jerky hey i'm not having anything anymore I'm just having the bare minimum some people are tough enough to do that like they they just power through and tough it through like I'm going to be extremely frugal at everything. But some people just for their mental health and sanity still need to get that little boba tea or that little like juice or that little treats here and there because it's so em emotionally draining to be in that position in the first place. And the fact that now, she, even when she's going to find a job, she will have to refund all those creditors because they're going to be after her and it's going to be so bad I wonder the amount of people who have to claim uh, bankruptcy after being in debt for so long and unemployed for so long that even when they got the job at a decent salary, they completely unable to pay even the minimum payments, which is really, really crazy. I'm going to be completely honest. My savings account was depleted the day I got laid off. I had thousands of dollars in my savings account and I left $15 in there because I needed to pay bills the next month. Everything was coming within that next week, so I took everything out. And all of the side gigs that I've done over the months, whether it was photography, doing Rover, doing tutoring online, doing proofreading or editing documents, a lot of stuff that I've done over the last several years for side income, that became just more prominent about what I was doing. And that's what I was doing for income for the last several months, but it just stayed in my checking account to pay bills. I was doing the best I could, and my savings account was not a thought, truly. I had $15 in there, and at the end of January, I had 58 cents. And it wasn't until I got the notification that my savings account went to negative $4.41 that I said, oh. And I think, you know, I once had savings and it all got depleted because I was laid off before I got to start and it just took everything. And I know this has happened to a lot of people, not just me. At least she was not going in debt and she had savings that's how it's really really important if right now you have a job and you are able to put something no matter if it's fifty dollars aside just do it 
because nobody have job security. It don't exist. Nobody knows if they're going to be laid off tomorrow and they, how long it's going to take for you to find another position. Just put something aside because this woman was able to survive several months on her savings until she got notified. Hey, you don't have any more money, but it was exactly at the moment where she found a job. So you can go back to zero, but going back to negative plus negatively impacted with interest is even worse. So if you can have some type of saving, something that helps you during these tough times, just build it right now. Don't wait next month after holidays or once I get this or that. No, just start with something, something small. It can help you for just one bill. It can help you for something. It's still going to be better than not having anything. I didn't know, so I'm telling you, the job market right now, October 2024, sucks, okay? If you have a decent job, a decent paying job, keep that motherfucking job and so you have something lined up. Learn from me. She just said what I said. Learn from her. Learn from the people around you that have been in that situation. If you have a job right now, just keep it. Don't go around moving, doing too much. Stay put at work and just stack the money up. Times are difficult at the moment. Until the economy is recovering, save your money as much as you can. Hi, my name is Amy and I'm on month five of a job hunt that doesn't seem to end. And I have a quick question for the chat. Is anybody else experiencing where you interview in person and then get ghosted? I've been working for 20 years. This has never happened to me. What the fuck? I mean, this market is crazy. So the ghosting now is just something that people are used to. It's just regular thing. People going through six interviews process I heard and still getting ghosted. That's disgusting. Like how a company can be so inconsiderate and get you through so many interviews and processes and then ghost you without even give you an answer. Like how that person is supposed to feel, how that candidate is supposed to feel because you over there hoping and thinking that I, I must have the job. Like I did everything they asked me to do. All that to be ghosted. In this video, this girl is saying, this girl is crying, but she wrote POV, which is point of view. You work full time, but you are $100 short for rent. You couldn't get help from your family. You weren't allowed to donate plasma. And you are trying to work extra on Uber, but not getting orders. I'm struggling. Well, it's a lot it's a reality for a lot of people out there. And I, I didn't know even that people were going down to the point of giving plasma to be able to, to survive. Like, it's a thing? That's, that's insane. And the fact that she's not getting orders, <laughs> it makes totally sense. First, there's way less people ordering food because it's so expensive. Second, there's a huge amount of drivers. So therefore, having even order is getting difficult so you can't get paid and when you do it's only a couple dollars it's not even paying off for your gas so i understand that that lady like it it can get worse than that and i don't know what's her financial situation if she's in debt if she has possibilities for her to have money from a way or another but she seems exhausted and a lot of People at the end of the month, the end of the weeks, feel the exact same way and don't speak up and end up being a depression. Don't let that happen to you. If you're still in a good position right now or a decent position, prepare yourself in case those type of days happen to you. This is how I know that the job market is so tough out there for people is that I have been talking to candidates on the phone for an interview and then when I go to contact them again, their phone is turned off. And then when I send them an email, they're like, oh yeah, sorry, my phone's off right now. Here's another phone number. You can contact me. People are struggling to the point where they can't pay their phone bills, which means they can't get contacted for jobs. This is how I know that the job market. Wow. <laughs> I mean, the phones are super expensive in general. And some people use Google Voice to have a phone number or they will have a little quick phone number um, with like those like, you know those SIM cards that don't have like a like a prepaid card? Yes, those prepaid cards because they're way cheaper. Because 
handling or maintaining a line is so expensive. Some people have to pay for the phone plus the line, the subscription, the everything, 100, 150, 200 a month. Oof, it's hard. So what did they do? They just don't pay for it. Yeah, the line is cut off and they get to get another SIM card or another way to, um, to be on the phone. And if that recorder notices it, it means that a lot of people are doing the same thing. Like, why the fuck is the job market so motherfucking ghetto right now? Like, it's so ghetto. Like, if you got a job, you better hold on to that motherfucker tight. Like, hold on for dear life. Like, you need to stay with the job that you are in. If you don't like it, just deal with it, suck it up. Because, baby, the job market right now ain't it. It's not it. You could be going on so many interviews and nobody calling you back. You could be in group interviews and nobody dealing with you. Yeah. It's the same thing I've been saying over and over and over and over. If you have a job right now, stay put, save your money, prepare yourself for the rainy days. Because everybody's saying the same thing. It's not looking good out there. The one that try to change, that are quitting their job, that are like looking for other opportunities. This is not the time. Unless you're in an industry that is thriving and that you know that for sure 100% you gonna find something or have something don't do it i'm not saying just because the market is crazy but because inflation is crazy food is crazy mortgages are crazy insurance are crazy everything is so high so it's not about that oh don't look for the nice opportunity that you need for yourself or things like that it's more about how do you protect your finances in such a tough time and if you're not an entrepreneur, you have a company, some type of money coming from another source and your only source of living is your current employment. Stay put, do what you got to do, go to work, be on time, save your money, invest if you have enough to do so, and then wait a little bit because life is a cycle, economy is a cycle, we will recover. You just have to survive while we are in the down moment. And when we'll be up, you'll be able to change or do anything that you want with your career. Well, I hope this video was at least entertaining. I hope you learned something. I hope you could relate to those um, stories. I will try to do more animated videos like I did at the beginning of my video. Please let me know in the comment section down below if you enjoyed that little narrative that I created. Um, I really enjoyed um, spending some time creating that story. And if you do, I'll try to do more of those challenges. Thank you so much for watching my video please comment peacefully in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.